Did you figure it out? Let's look at the answer to the problem. Well, we can start with the make loop B, sure enough. And we can multiply both sides by A, and we can subtract B squared from both sides, and so on. And we can do our factoring. But this is the critical step. Because at this step, I said that we can divide through by the common term A minus B. The difficulty with that, though, is that A equals B. And so A minus B is 0. Hence, we can't divide by it. So <clears throat> the first four lines are fine. But the, st the step from 4 to 5 is not fine. Okay? And since we can't get to 5, we can't get to 6 or 7 or 8, which is, of course, a problematic line. Well, if you figured that out, that's good. That's a great first step. And if you did figure it out, well, what you were doing was a good example of critical reasoning. Okay? What is critical reasoning? That's what we're here to find out. But roughly... As a first approximation, critical thinking is thinking about thinking. Okay? This is an expression of a certain kind of mathematical thinking. Trying to spot the mistake in that reasoning is thinking about that thinking as it is expressed here. Okay? And that's really what critical thinking is. Thinking about proper thinking, about right thinking, about how I ought to be thinking. Okay? Now, of course, there's a sense in which you should be free to think whatever you want to think, and of course that's true. And that's why critical thinking, and indeed philosophy generally, when you take these kinds of classes, we care not so very much about what you think, but about how you think what you think. Okay? How you reason. This kind of reasoning is no good. Now, the mistake that prevents this piece of reasoning from being good is a pretty subtle one. You may not have noticed where the mistake lay. And we're going to get to complicated mistakes of that sort, but we're going to begin the class by talking about easier things to overcome, more common everyday mental phenomena that can get in the way of good critical thinking. So there are a couple features to avoid. When you're trying to engage in critical thinking, you want to make sure that you're not being clouded by, for example, emotion. Emotions are, of course, a valuable thing. Uh, it's a good thing that human beings have evolved in such a way as to have emotions, and so on, and they have their time and place. But that time and place is certainly not when it comes down to critical reasoning. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> if you make decisions when you're angry or upset or frightened, you're bound not to make the best decision possible. Okay? Another sort of family of interference factors are what psychologists often call biases. <clears throat> now, bias is going to be our first sort of central point of the, of the class. And so I'm going to have quite a bit more to say about them, detailing various kinds and so on. But for now, just think of them as factors that inhibit your judgment, inhibit your ability to reason critically, um, especially factors that are subconscious. Okay. <clears throat> Emotions, uh, at least generally speaking, are very much a conscious phenomenon. You know when you're angry you know when you're frightened. These biases are often an unconscious factor. Okay? And so that means it can be harder to get rid of them, but no less important. Okay, <clears throat> well if these are the things we want to avoid, what is our goal? What's the aim? How can we characterize not bad thinking, but good, proper, critical thinking? Well, the standard here is really 
what philosophers and most other people call rationality. That, in a nutshell, sums up what we're aiming for when we try to reason the best that we can. We want our thinking to be rational. We want our decisions to be rational. Uh, when we charge someone else with irrationality, we take that to be a very serious criticism. Okay. <clears throat> now, the obvious first question is, what is rationality? But that turns out to be a surprisingly subtle and difficult problem. Uh, <clears throat> on the other hand, that just puts it on a par with almost every other philosophy class you can think of. Okay? If you study the philosophy of time, you might ask about the nature of time. And that turns out to be a surprisingly difficult question. If you study the philosophy of right and wrong, or of good and bad, that's ethics. Well, those notions turn out also to be very difficult, very hard to get your mind around in a very precise way, which is what we want to have in order to have a real definition of the thing. If you study epistemology, that's the philosophy of knowledge. Well, the natural first question is, what is knowledge? And of course, that also turns out to be very difficult. But the fact that these notions are difficult to define precisely, knowledge, good, right, time, and our notion now, rationality, well, the fact that they're difficult to define in no way shows that they're not important and interesting and meaningful concepts. On the contrary, these concepts that we're talking about are among the most everyday, among the most fundamental, and among the most important in our everyday lives. Okay, uh, now for some terminology. First, uh, I'm going to use the terms belief and judgment and opinion interchangeably. Okay? Beliefs, judgments, opinions, they're all basically the same kind of thing. Uh, and what they are are expressions of what we might say expressions of statements or claims or a fancy philosopher's word here is propositions. Okay. Now, a claim or a statement or proposition is just that, a statement about often about how the world is. Okay. <clears throat> now, we're going to take the world to have a certain definite character. And that is, certain statements about it will be either true or false. Okay? And no statement will be both true and false. No statement will be neither true or false. Every statement will be either true or false. Okay? Now, of course, our beliefs, our judgments, our opinions, well, those are entities in our minds, as it were. Those are subjective notions. And I may have my beliefs, and you may have yours. And I may have my judgments, and you yours. And so those things are, of course, different from the truth. Those things are different from what's, in fact, true of the world. Okay. But <clears throat> even though you and I may disagree about something, well, at least for the kinds of claims we're going to be talking about here, that doesn't mean that there's no fact of the matter. It means that at most one of us is correct. Okay? We might in fact both be wrong. But clearly if we disagree, we can't both be right. Because again, no statement is both true and false. <clears throat> now, let's talk for a minute about these words, objective, subjective.
so these notions up at the top are subjective. 